Hey guys, welcome back. Keith here, Jesse on the camera. And tonight we're actually working on Jesse's truck. Um, this is a build I had started years ago and then um, I just started buying a bunch of stuff and I never really got around to finishing it so I gifted it to Jesse and uh, we kind of got to this point four years ago, something like that. It's been a minute so uh, we're just being so busy with everything else and just trying to keep up to date new content for the channel and Instagram and all that fun stuff. So we actually decided to go back and uh, get to work on Jesse's build so we can start getting this guy done. Uh, it's a RC four wheel drive, K5 Blazer, and it is sitting, uh, the body, and it is sitting on a axial uh, SCX10 OG chassis. Yep, I had to look in the back door. <laughs> yeah, it's an SCX10 uh, OG chassis, which is like uh, from obviously the first generation, uh, which kind of started the craze for all this good stuff back in 2009, I think it came out. So, uh, tried and true, very solid platform. Uh, it's got some cool parts. Let me get this body off real quick and we'll get into that. Okay, so under the hood we have the axial, standard axial um, C-channel chassis in there and then in the front we have the uh, Generis Custom Machine GCM front motor plate uh, that brings up your transmission and your motor to, and your spur gear up under the, uh, in front of the firewall on the truck under the hood. Um, Yes, this one has an opening hood, so yeah, it brings it up under the hood. And then they also give you this really nice machined um, transfer case to go in the middle to replace where your transmission sat, so you can get everything nice and low, everything fit in there really nicely. Uh, the body mounts on this one was done by our friend Ryan over Eliminator RC. He did make it adjustable in a few different positions for us and did a really bang up job on just nailing that one. Uh, I knocked it out of the park. Um, I, I get Ryan to do a few of our. Um, uh, body mounts and stuff like that. He's really good at it. So we just throw him his way and he gives his hand with that We really appreciate it. Okay, and then moving on to the front of the truck. We have the Vanquish products uh, Aluminum chassis mounted servo mount and we stuck our ESC on top and our uh, Receiver on the side with double-sided tape just kind of fitting everything in a package right there um, It's a nice little unit It gives you a spot to actually mount your bumper and your servo onto the chassis which you need to do on a three link setup. Uh, then we got the three link set up here by taking out this one upper top link here. And then that goes to the Panard and upper three link mount right here from Vanquish Products. And that also, uh, you have to have the upper chassis mount, um, the CMS or the three link uh, Panard, sorry, the upper Panard mount that's part of the CMS uh, chassis mount the servo steering kit. You have to buy all the parts individually. I know. The upper part isn't available anymore, but the lower part is. I know a lot of guys uh, just make their own weld a bracket onto the frame. Super easy to do. We can take care of that yourself, no problem. Um, what else? Uh, we've got some very old axial high steer uh, knuckles in here. Uh, very old generation, old technology here. Uh, these axle, these C-hubs you also notice are straight through. They don't have the eight degree inclination angle, the kingpin KPI angle. These are just straight up and down. So they're not gonna be the greatest for performance, but it is toting a hard body with a full interior and a fat cop driving it. So everything adds up to a bit of weight. Um, so it, it's gonna work fine for what it is. Uh, Jesse has other trucks. So if he wants to go do more serious crawling, he can. So this is more trail based with the older parts and such like that, but it doesn't really matter what parts you're running as long as you can drive you're gonna have fun so okay so the wheels for this truck we have used the axial uh 10.2 i think it's a split six spoke one two yeah split six spoke a oh it is a method it's a method split six it looks good and then we wrapped that in a pitbull what is it atx's nope Pitbull Rock Beast 1.55, uh, fantastic looking tire. Uh, they look so good on the 1.9 with the 155 stretch. It looks very scale. It's not too overly aggressive and uh, looks great. Uh, the foam's a little stiff in there, but once again, it's gonna be a heavy load. 
And uh, yeah, shocks are the old school uh, 10.2 icons in silver. They look fantastic. Okay, so uh, now with the body, we are working on the paint right now. Uh, luckily for you guys, we're almost done this build. And um, I don't know if you can tell by the thumbnail, of course, we got Hooper from Stranger Things. And uh, we actually found him at uh, GameStop and that kind of set us in the motion of doing the build for this truck. This truck was actually blue before and we were going a completely different route. And then we ended up getting Hooper with his coffee cup and his pistol and um, he just seems to work so well with the truck. And he's got the same truck of course on the show. So we're going to uh, go with that and uh, yeah, have some fun with it. Now we did some test hits on the hood. Some of the paint peeled up the paint underneath because we had a Rust-Oleum or another product underneath. As soon as you hit that with Tamiya, the Tamiya eats right through it instantly. So we're just doing our test colors to figure it out. But we're going to do it in Tamiya Racing White, which is kind of a cream white. But we're going to do that with a uh, sand as a base coat, which would give it more of a creamier white color. And then we're going to do Tamiya TS46 light sand on the top and bottom. So we're going to have the white-ish stripe with light sand top bottom, a little bit of deckling to do on the doors and uh, the full interior build. And this guy should be ready to go in about two or three quick little episodes. Uh, interior, we do have to, RC four wheel drive mounts the dash on the floor. Um, so with Hooper sitting, let me move this out of the way for a second. So with RC four wheel drive mounting their dash so low in the truck, which I get, they got to fit the windshield and a lot of stuff in there. He actually doesn't have much room for his legs. So um, we need to actually open up this piece completely so he can run his legs uh, out through the front. And what else was it? Yeah, we have to bring the dash up so it actually looks proper to scale. So he's going to need a little bit of work. Unfortunately, I think he's going to end up losing the end of his legs just for fitment reasons. Yeah, he fits like a toddler in there. He's good enough. We'll see where he's going to end up. But yeah, so to get it sitting kind of somewhat decent, like right now the dash is there. So you can see we got a bit of work to do to make this whole thing jive like it should. So we're going to do some playing around. I don't know, bring this back, add a filler, move the interior forward. Obviously that's going to be another something to look at, right? Bring this piece forward just so we can get that closer. So. We got a bunch of work to do guys, so stick around, that's gonna be fun. Uh, Jesse had went back and ordered this on uh, Shapeways. I don't remember the name of the store. Uh, he can put it in the uh, title, uh, or he can put it in the comments, or sorry, he can put it in the description. Uh, this is the M1009 for the K5 military blazer grill. It gives you the four stacked headlights instead of the uh, round headlights that come on the K5 Blazer. So it's gonna look cool with the four uh, stack headlights. You get a headlight on top and just a marker light on the bottom. But we gotta do a bit of cutting out uh, in here to make it fit. We gotta cut these guys back. We gotta round out the bottom corner. And then this guy um, came with the military grill on the top. So we're gonna cut that off of it, smooth that out and put it on. And uh, yeah, from there it's uh, paint and uh, lights and we're good so um, enough talking about this um, we're gonna get to work first up will be the paint unfortunately like we just said this is a rust-oleum paint luckily I can see some blue through there so it's not that thick on here but before I hit this with a Tamiya product I need to go through and sand that all off because it will um, like the hood It'll just wrinkle and crackle and bubble and peel off and just turn the, this to mush when I paint it on there. So, Okay, so Jesse and I got to start sanding this thing down. We got about a day of sanding to get this guy knocked down back to a uh, state where we can actually reapply some Tamiya primer. And then we can get on it with the TS46 to get this nice dark uh, light sand color out of it. And once we're done that, we're going to let it cure up for at least 24 hours, but probably more like 48 hours. Uh, we find with a heavy thick coat like that the more it can cure 
the better, of course, because once you start laying tape down, I've had problems where you get tape lines sticking. Rick, you know what I'm talking about. So it sucks, but um, it's things that happen when you're doing layers and paint. So the longer you can let that dry before you put your tape on it, um, the better. Make sure you're using a Tamiya tape and you will still end up with some lines, but it won't be glue stuck to your paint. Like if you use the green paint, do not use green paint, uh, painter's tape. Don't use green painter's tape, it is garbage. Uh, just proper stuff for modeling, if you're using your house, whatever, right? Different paints too, so. Um, that's the tip of the day we got there. Uh, that's it, Jesse, any info, input? Yeah. Yeah, we'll paint the wheels up to match. We'll do the chrome center caps. So I think I have chrome center caps. I can just screw onto them and then do it done. <laughs> okay, so we'll see you guys back here in a few seconds once we're done stripping this down. Okay, well, there we go. We've got the body pretty much sanded out in our, um, or stripped of its old paint. Um, enough to uh, get some primer on it and start painting again. We started with uh, 120 grit on electric sander, made sure we didn't go all the way through. The body was this red color before, so as long as we didn't go all the way through the red, we knew we weren't gonna get into the plastic and start making it all wave and such. And then I hit it with 220 after, and then I'm gonna primer it, and then I'm gonna sand the primer with 400 grit, and then I'm gonna primer it again, another sand, uh, 400, and then paint, so. Um, I'm going to spray this up with primer and we'll see you guys back here in a few minutes. I've already just washed it all down, um, soap, water, rag, got in there, got it all clean, uh, dried it really well, hit it with the um, hair dryer, make sure there's no surprises and now we're going to go spray it uh, primer. Uh, the bed I'm not too worried about, we're going to do that in the classic um, Pro Noob uh, Flex Seal to give that bed liner look that we came up with a couple of years ago there. So we're gonna do that and we'll see you guys back here in a few seconds with some paint on it. Okay, so we got the body all done, primer, ready for paint. Step one done. Um, actually one more thing we need to do is actually fit that grill in. And before we get the paint done, you wanna go through all your uh, roughing out, all your building, all your mods. Uh, that's clearly not going to work with the steering wheel where our super wheel drive has it laid out in the truck. So uh, we're going to actually cut out this section right here and we're going to drop this floor pan, uh, floor pan down to the same level as it down here uh, just to help get another half inch. And then I might angle the dash a little bit. We're going to figure something out. Uh, probably going to heat these guys up and put a little bit of a bend to them. Just something to make it work a little better. But we're going to start with cutting that and getting that down. Now I did check, there is room with this GCM front mount with their uh, trench case in the middle. There is room to make that work, so it'll sit nice and flat in there, so. Um, yeah, I'm gonna grab the razor saw, get that cut, and then we can get this all fit together with the body, make sure he's gonna fit in there, and get on to the next step, which would be then the grill, and then paint, so. There we go, that's so bad. Okay, so that's the general idea. We're gonna drop that guy, bring that guy down like that. Um, open this guy up, I took this little chunk out here. I can fill that with some styrene after. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna get that done. Uh, we'll see you guys back in a few minutes when I finish this side. There's no point in watching me chop away at this. And uh, we'll see you back in a few minutes. Okay, so we got that chunk cut out. We got the seat dropped down. We got the dash brought up. It's looking a lot better than that sitting right on the seat like it was before. But our buddy Hoop here is gonna need a little bit more room to fit in there. Now when you sit in a seat, your butt squishes out, the seat squishes, so we're gonna shave out his butt, probably cut it in half to drop him down a little bit more to get him in there. We're gonna have to take off uh, at least one of his feet um, to make that work. Bit of work going on yet, but we're gonna get it. Um, we just don't want it looking bad when it's done. So he's gonna have to sit in there properly. You can see the shoulder blade should be a little lower in the seat yet, stuff like that. So once we shave his butt down, we can get him sitting where we want. This steering wheel, this whole dash should be angled up a little bit, like so. So we can actually uh, heat up these posts and bend them a little bit. And then we're gonna extend the steering column and bring it back somewhere we can actually reach because everything kind of needs to move at least another half inch back, a little bit up, a little bit down, a little bit left, a little bit right. So 
Okay, so now that we have that dropped a bit, let's actually give that a quick test fit onto the truck. Make sure this is all gonna go to plan still. Damn it, I hope your foot's in the way. Come on, there you go, buddy. Okay. So that's sitting in there. You know, he's still sitting good. A little bit high uh, still. So once we shave his butt and bring him down a little bit lower, he's actually going to fit in there a lot nicer. His shoulder blade's are actually fitting right now, kind of into that groove we want. So, okay. So that's going to bring us to the end of this video, guys. Uh, we don't want to tie too much together in one video for you. Uh, the next step to this is going to be getting this grill modified. Remember, we have to cut off that bush grill off the front, get this modified. Sorry get the truck modified to receive the grill. We have to cut out these bottom tabs, such like that. Um, that's gonna be part two of the video, along with the paint, and then we're gonna finish up the interior. Uh, part one was just kinda rough everything up, get everything fitting roughly where we wanted. Uh, there'd be a lot of detail on shaving and getting him to fit in there and getting that fitting and the paint job. Coming up in part two, and part three will be a final detail and decal and all that stuff like that. Stay tuned guys, we got a couple of cool videos coming up along the way. And uh, we're actually getting some melt around here so we can finally get outside. Jesse and I are itching to get outside. It's been a way too much snow. We can't even drive right now. So it, it's just been a crappy winter for RC for us. So we'll see you guys soon. And uh, yeah.